Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that certain insects can achieve seemingly impossible accelerations while jumping. They say that the click beetle accelerates at an astonishing 400 Gs over a distance of 0.6 centimeters. They say for part A, assuming that it jumps straight up, what speed does it leave the ground? So before we get into it, let's make a list of our variables. So the initial velocity before it's jumping obviously is zero meters per second. The acceleration they tell us is 400 g's, so 400 times 9.8. The delta y we're given as 0.6 centimeters, and if we put that into standard units, that is 0.6 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. So now when we go to part a, we can use the kinematic equation of v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2 a delta y. We're using this one because there is no time that's given at all. So this is the only kinematic equation that doesn't require time as part of it. So this is the one that we'll use, of course. The initial velocity is zero. So we have v final squared is equal to 2a delta y. And for part a, what we're trying to find is the final velocity. Since it's already set up for that, it's pretty easy. Now we just have to take the square root of both sides. So v final is equal to the square root of 2 times the acceleration times the change in y. So now when we plug our values into that, we have 2 times the acceleration. And the acceleration in this case is given as 400 times 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we'll multiply that by the change in the y, which is, of course, 0 0.6 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. So now when we take the square root of all of that, we have 2 times 400 times 9.8 times 0.6 times 10 to the negative 2, which gives us a final velocity as it jumps of 6.86 meters per second. So here's the answer for part A of how fast is it leaving the ground? Now when we go to part B, we need to figure out how long it takes the beetle to reach that speed. So let's find an equation that has t in it. This one is easier. We can actually just use the basic acceleration formula, which is the change in velocity over the change in time. We need to isolate the change in time, so we'll multiply both sides by t. So we have the change in velocity is equal to the acceleration times the time. And then when we divide both sides of the equation by acceleration, we have time is equal to velocity over acceleration. The initial velocity we said was zero. So the delta v, it's the same thing as saying final velocity. So this is the value that we'll be plugging in here. So t is going to be equal to 6.86 meters per second divided by 400 times 9.8 meters per second squared. So 6.86 divided by 400 times 9.8. So the time that it takes for it to leave the ground is 0 .00, 0 0.00175 seconds. And we can move the decimal place over 1, 2, 3 which will give us 1.75 milliseconds. So here are our two answers for part B. Now let's give us some more room, and they say ignoring air resistance, how high would it go? So for part C, we're going to be finding the delta Y. So we'll be using V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta Y. We could use one that has T in it, in um, this case, we don't really need it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So we need to solve for the delta y. So let's move over the initial velocity. And the final velocity is also 0, because what we're doing is we're looking at half of it jumping up in the air. And then it stops, and then we'll fall back down. So we're looking at this half right here. The final velocity is 0. The v initial 
is what we found up here. So now we have negative vi squared is equal to 2a times a delta y. And now we want to isolate delta y, so let's divide both sides by 2a. And we'll be left with delta y is equal to a negative velocity initial squared over 2 times the acceleration. So when we plug in our values, we have a negative velocity initial squared, which is 6.86 .6 meters per second. We'll square that. And then we'll divide the whole thing by 2 times the acceleration, which in this case, as it's jumping, the only thing acting on it when it's in the air is gravity. So gravity is pointing down, so it'll be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The double check on the units for this is sometimes a little tricky for students, but it's cool to look at. When we square the top units, what we're left with is meters squared over seconds squared, and we're dividing that by meters per second squared. So when we multiply the reciprocal, what we get is meters squared over seconds squared times by second squared over meters. So now the second squared will cancel. The meter will cancel out one of them, leaving us with meters over one. So that's how we end up with the correct units of delta y for meters. So it's a good double check to let us know that yes, we did the math correctly, so we're gonna get the right answer. So delta y in this case will be equal to a negative 6.86 squared, and then we'll divide it by 2 times a negative 9.8. So we have the final delta y is 2.4 meters, or how high the beetle went, ignoring air resistance.